in the chemical classification of matter matter is classified or materials are classified in two different ways the first one is the physical classification and the next one is chemical classification first let's talk about the physical classification when matter or materials are classified uh, physically then it is based on the physical state under ordinary conditions of temperature and pressure so this is important that it should be ordinary temp conditions of temperature and pressure and why let's take an example to understand this point suppose you have some water now water at the room temperature is in the liquid state but if you freeze that water then that water becomes ice now ice is the solid state so we are not talking about that extreme conditions of temperature and pressure like another example iron an iron rod if you heat it at a very high temperature that iron rod melts that that iron becomes in goes in the liquid state so we are not talking about that extreme conditions of temperature and pressure ordinary conditions of temperature and pressure like the room temperature so this is important so when we classify matter or materials physically uh, in the physical classification then it's it's classified as solids liquids or gases and how in the case of solids the solids have definite shape and definite volume that's really very important let's understand this with an example here we have a piece of rock okay this piece of rock has a definite shape and ha uh, has a definite volume okay now if we take this piece of rock and we put it in this cube uh, object that is of the shape of a cube if you put this piece of rock here its shape and volume will not change it will remain the same what it was initially similarly if you take this piece of rock and if you transfer it in this solid object that is a cuboid again its shape and volume will not change it will remain what it was initially okay but here in the case of liquids suppose you have 5 liter water now if you take this 5 liter water and if we pour it in this uh, cube shaped object whose volume is 5 cubic meter now the volume is 5 liter that will not change okay the volume of the water will remain the same that is 5 liter but now its shape will be it the water will take the shape of a cube this is 5 cubic meter cube right but if the same water the same quantity of water is transferred into this cuboid object this was cube it's a cuboid now when you transfer this 5 liter water into this cuboid object then volume will remain the same but now the water will take the shape of a cuboid here it was cube here it is cuboid that's why we have written here the liquids have no definite shape but they have definite volume now last one is gases neither definite shape nor definite volume and why suppose we have a gas that is stored in this object of volume 1 cubic meter okay so the volume of gas will be 1 cubic meter if we transfer this gas into this object solid object that is a cube whose volume is 5 cubic meter then the volume also changes now the volume of the gas becomes 5 cubic meter and the shape becomes of that of a cube okay so it its shape is also changing its shape also changes and the volume also changes why from 1 cubic meter it changes to 5 cubic meter why does uh, in this case the volume increases increased because gases expand okay gases expand and they occupy the whole space where they have been stored right similarly if we take the same quantity of gas that is one cubic meter and if we transfer this gas into this solid object that is a cuboid whose volume is 10 cubic meter now the shape of this gas will be that of this cuboid that is it will take the shape of a cuboid and now the volume will increase from 1 cubic meter to 10 cubic meter again because gases expand they occupy the whole space where they have been stored where they are stored 
that is why the gases don't have a definite shape nor definite volume so this was about the physical classification now the next is the chemical classification it's it's really very important in the chemical classification matter or materials are classified in two different groups mixtures and pure substances let's understand this here we have a vessel in which we have uh, iron particles this gray one is for iron particles uh, the white dots are for the salt particles and this yellow dots are for the sand particles if we mix them then it's actually a mixture why this mixture because it is a physical combination it's a physical combination of three different substances listen to this word properly it's a physical combination not a chemical combination because it is up to you it's up to you you can increase the quantity of this iron particle or if you want you can increase the quantity of this salt particle or if you want then you can increase the quantity of this sand particle it's up to you to change the ratio of the particles here that's why it's a mixture because it's just a physical combination and not a chemical combination that is why it's a mixture of three substances okay in the same way if we take fresh air now we know that fresh air has several components the major one are two uh, 78 percent is nitrogen 21 percent is oxygen and we have taken this carbon dioxide which is present in a very trace amount that is 0.04 percent right again nitrogen gas oxygen gas and carbon dioxide gas these three gases are not chemically combined they are physically combined they are physically combined that's why again fresh air is also a mixture they are just chemically uh, physically combined and not chemi chemically combined there is no chemical combination between these two gases or between these two gases mixture now let's take this example of the tap water tap water is also a mixture because it is a physical combination of several salts like fluoride like sodium chloride like calcium uh, calcium is an element and then dust particles several germs bacteria so it's a mixture but if we purify this tap water and if we get a, di a distilled water or pure water then it's purely water that is h2o that is why this distilled water is not a mixture tap water is a mixture but distilled water is not a mixture because it is simply h2o so in this case the three examples that we have seen here the first one the second one this third tap water these three examples are of mixtures mixtures contain are made up of several substances of two or more substances and they are physically combined not chemically combined but let's take this example of distilled water that we have here now distilled water is the purified uh, for form of this tap water okay it only contains h2o 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 and that's it therefore it's basically what this is one molecule of h2o this is one molecule of h2o this is a single unit this is acting as a single unit so this vessel which contains water is actually what h2o 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 and so on and so forth this is a pure substance h2o is a pure substance and if we want to break its components then we can break it into h2 and o2 remember this is a compound this is a compound this compound is also made up of two substances hydrogen and oxygen then what's the difference between this and this example these three examples the difference is here these three mixtures were also composed of more than two substances but they were physically combined in this case that is h2o that is it's a one molecule of h2o in one molecule of h2o we have two atoms of hydrogen element it means that two atoms of one particular substance 
and then we have one atom of oxygen element it means that we have total two substances here hydrogen and oxygen the only thing is they are chemically combined they are chemically combined there is a chemical combination that is sharing of electrons and all right so when we decompose it h2o into its components that is hydrogen gas and oxygen then we actually break these bonds right so we get hydrogen and oxygen the two substances from which h2o is made up of similarly let's say that we have a gas chamber and in this gas chamber we have co2 gas carbon dioxide gas this is one molecule of co2 this is one molecule of co2 right it means that one molecule of co2 or co2 gas is made up of again two substances one atom of carbon and two atoms of oxygen one atoms of one atom of carbon and two atoms of oxygen it means that co2 is made up of two substances carbon and oxygen and if we want to break this into its components then we'll get carbon and oxygen right so what's the difference between this one and these three examples here also here we have a compound co2 that is made up of two substances but they are chemically combined and not physically combined here in these three cases the substances were physically combined that is why again co2 is a compound and compounds are also pure substances co2 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 and nothing else right okay so we can take example or an example of h2so4 in this case this particular compound compound is made up of three substances hydrogen sulfur and oxygen all are chemically combined right that is why compounds are pure substances unlike these three examples that we have seen here now the next example uh, the next point is about elements hydrogen is an element oxygen is an element carbon is an element Oxy oxygen we have covered so here sulfur is an element elements are also pure substances just like compounds elements are also pure substances and unlike uh, compounds they cannot be chemically broken they are the pure substances they are pure substances that cannot be chemically broken into simpler form okay like in this case h2o was broken into hydrogen and oxygen can you break it further into any other element no you cannot can you break this o2 into any other element no you cannot similarly can we break this sulfur into any other uh, other element chemically no we cannot so chemically is important you cannot convert an element into another element or broke you cannot break a element into another element chemically by applying radiation by applying radiation we actually convert one element into another element but that's a completely different thing altogether okay so chemically you cannot break an element into another element that's important so compound is a pure substance elements are pure substance because they cannot be further broken into any other substance okay so mixtures are not pure substances because they are physically combined and their ratio can be changed this is the important thing so let's discuss a little deeper now elements total number of elements known to date is equal to 118 okay we all have seen uh, the periodic table okay so in periodic table we have 118 elements some of the elements present in the periodic table are found in the nature and some are uh, designed or uh, you know invented in laboratories okay one point that i missed here was this that precious matters so the thing is that elements very rarely it happens that only only few element uh, elements exist in the pure form that is in the free state they are not available in the free state uh, in our atmosphere or in the earth's crust 
they are always present in the form of compounds that is they are chemically combined with other substances and from there we extract elements from there we extract elements like if we have an iron rod let's say that we have an iron rod that's entirely made up of iron element that is fe so this iron rod made up of only iron this iron is extracted from certain compounds iron doesn't exist in its free state but there are few uh, metals or elements like gold silver and platinum gold silver and platinum are called precious metals because they are present in the earth's crust in the pure form that is in the form of elements not in the form of compounds right so this one is very important that very rarely very rarely elements are present in the pure form so there are total number of so total number of elements known to date is equal to 118 elements can be divided into three different groups metals non metals and metalloids metals are electropositive in nature that is they donate electrons non metals on the other hand are electronegative in nature that is they accept electrons metalloids act both as metals and non metals examples are uh, boron silicon and germanium okay now metals are good conductors of heat and electricity okay they uh, uh, the current can flow through them and heat they also absorb heat or they are good conductors of heat they are malleable that is they can be hammered to form sheets they can be hammered to form sheets you can form a sheet out of a metal they are ductile it means that they can be drawn into wires we all have seen copper wires right so they can be drawn into wires that is why they are ductile malleable means sheets ductile means wires they are solid at room temperature except mercury mercury is in the liquid state at the room temperature they have a very high density their densities are very high okay of different metals then in the case of non metals they are brittle it means that they can be formed into pieces like you can literally cut them into pieces that is what it is brittle then they are poor conductors of heat and electricity except graphite graphite is a good conductor of electricity remember this one okay the graphite is a non metal but it's a good conductor of electricity it exists in all the three states it all the three states in this case metals metals exist at in the solid state except mercury but in the case of non metals they exist in all the three states solids some examples are iodine phosphorus etc uh, bromine exists in the liquid state oxygen nitrogen etc they these two gases exist in the gaseous state and then we have discussed about metalloids that is they act both as metals and non metals examples are boron silicon and germanium and now let's move to compounds so in the case of compounds atoms of different elements combine in a fixed ratio example h2o one molecule of hydrogen uh, sorry water h2o so what's the ratio 2 ratio 1 you cannot change this ratio it can't be like that in india it's h2o but in us in the usa it's h3o no one molecule of water that is h2o has the ratio 2 ratio 1 where hydrogen atom is twice uh, the number of oxygen atom that is h2o right in this case co2 one carbon atom with two oxygen atoms that is one ratio to this ratio is fixed and they are combined chemically can be decomposed into its constituent elements by chemical methods right so h2o liquid you can apply a method that is called electrolysis in electrolysis we actually pass current through water and we take two electrodes so on one of the two electrodes we get hydrogen gas and on the 
other electrode, we get oxygen gas. So we actually break this molecule of hydrogen into its components. That is hydrogen and oxygen. Next point is that properties of compounds differ from the properties of its constituent elements. This is really very important. The properties of compounds differ from the properties of its constituent elements. Example, hydrogen gas is highly flammable. Okay, oxygen gas supports combustion, but H2O that is liquid that is water extinguishes fire. That is the property of water differs completely differs from that of hydrogen gas and oxygen gas. It's completely different. So one example we have seen here. So these are some of the examples carbon dioxide, uh, uh, water, hydrogen chloride. So these are some of the examples of compounds. Okay. Now, types of compounds. The first type is organic compounds. Organic compounds are basically compounds that contain uh, carbon hydrogen bonds. Carbon hydrogen bonds. CH bonds. This gets sometimes uh, confusing. I'll explain you how. This is CH4. Okay, so this CH4 is methane. This is methane. Now, if we replace one hydrogen atom with chlorine, this is chloromethane. It's, it's still an organic compound. Again, if we replace two hydrogen atoms with chlorine, two chlorine atoms, so we get CLHNH. It is dichloromethane. If we replace three hydrogen atoms with th uh, three chlorine atoms, now it is trichloromethane. If we replace all the four hydrogen atoms with chlorine atoms, Now it is tetrachloromethane, but where is the CH bond? So you might say that it's not an organic compound. No, it's, it's an organic compound and why? Because tetrachloromethane has been derived from this methane. We have replaced uh, by breaking these four bonds and we have attached chlorine at these four different places to get this tetrachloromethane. That is why this is also an organic compound. Okay, so basically the thing is that organic compounds contain CH bonds, like here C2H6, this is ethane. So two carbon atoms and then we have these three hydrogen atoms here. Okay, this is, uh, this is HCHO that is formaldehyde. Okay, so again an organic compound. So basically what you will see that you will get a skeleton of carbon uh, of carbon, you know, carbon atoms. That is a long chain sometimes. You'll see that these are actually hydrocarbons. So these are all organic compounds. In this case, we have three carbon atoms and the carbon atoms are attached with each other by double bonds, right? So it's again an organic compound. The next type is inorganic compounds like hydrogen chloride, like carbon dioxide, like H2SO4, like calcium carbonate. So these compounds, they do not contain carbon hydrogen bonds. They do not have the, uh, the carbon hydrogen bonds. That is why their properties are different. And these are called inorganic compounds. Okay, so we have uh, covered, we have covered solids, liquids, gases. That is the physical classification. We have covered the chemical classification that is What's the difference between the mixtures and the pure substances? What do we mean by pure substances? We have discussed this one. And then we discussed about elements and compounds. And then we discussed that uh, compounds can be classified into two different groups. That is organic compounds and inorganic compounds. In our next video lecture, we'll be discussing mixtures. We'll not discuss it here. And the last part is that this homogeneous uh, thing that is elements and compounds are homogeneous. It means that they, when you look at any substance and if it has uniformity, 
if it has uniformity in its appearance if in its appearance and properties then that is actually called homogeneous homogeneous okay these are called homogeneous for example uh, let's say that you have a 24 karat gold you have a 24 karat gold now this 24 karat gold means that it's pure gold so it's whether you take this part you take this part you take this part you take this part its appearance its properties uh, will always be uniform so that is why we say that they are homogeneous like they don't have any different boundaries that you can identify that is in that region particular region the property is different or the appearance is different it's or composition is different that's not the case it's homogeneous that is it is made up of only one face one face there is the uniformity in their composition and properties in our next video lecture we'll be discussing about mixtures so see you in the next video lecture thanks for watching